Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. So, um, as you can tell by the title of today's video, I am going to be drawing one of my OCs as a Genshin Impact character or designing an outfit and everything for him. Um, but today's video is going to be a little bit different. I have split it into two different sections of footage. So, for maybe like a third of the video, it's going to be kind of this kind of footage where you guys are going to see me sketching my OC Masaki, which I'll show you guys pictures of him. Um, basically, he's like my florist OC and the OC that I love drawing the most and probably the one you guys are most like familiar with if you um, frequent my channel I guess and I thought it would just be nicer to see my hand on the tablet itself while I'm sketching but once we switch gears and actually do like the final illustration that I would like to do for today I am going to switch over to doing like screen recording so in the beginning you would have saw that I showed you guys my sketchbook because I did some preliminary sketches prior to doing these digital ones just because I wanted to have some kind of an idea even if it's just like a very basic idea but the reason why I'm doing these sketches is because I wanted to make sure that I had an idea of the design before going in and jumping into the actual final illustration which is I'm going to be attempting to do an actual like uh, summoning splash art um, for Masaki so I decided to make Masaki into a Dundro character and because um, the setting for his story and stuff that I have in my brain kind of sets into kind of more like Japan, kind of like small town-ish vibes. So that's kind of like the origin of his name as well. It's kind of more of obviously Japanese origin but then I wanted to make sure that I kind of follow suit with that. So I planted his kind of design around Inazuma so if I were to draw myself, I would probably do it based on Liyue because I am Chinese, but for Masaki, I'm going to place them in Inazuma. So I tried my best to do a little bit of research into um, some clothing and designs and stuff. I know one thing for sure is that I wanted to have his sleeves to be tied. So I was looking for what this was and I was trying to find references to see how they tie it and I just came up with this so I kind of have him in two-tone colored kind of thing, a white and kind of this darker tealy green. So I'll talk a bit more about the design when we get into the final illustration which we'll head on to right now. So this is what I came up with in terms of design. There are going to be a few changes and especially like I think the color scheme a little bit and kind of how I have like the belts and the ties around his waist is going to be a little bit different. So you can see that I have the splash art for Hazo. So I'm going to be using this kind of as a little bit of a reference. So I dimmed down the opacity so that I could draw on top just very briefly because I wanted to make sure that I get the head proportion a little bit similar in terms of where they place uh, the character in terms of like the splash art, the character placement, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to start sketching. I just basically took a screenshot or I found an image of this splash art and I decided to take this into uh, Clip Studio Paint, which we are working in today. I should have probably said that a bit earlier, but I wanted to make it the same aspect ratio and then I will tackle the colors as well. So. Um, you can see that right now, I believe I'm using the right boru pen for sketching and I'm just trying to plan out the pose at this point and I go through a few different things for basically his legs and like anything below the waist because I kind of wanted this angle for sure um, but I wanted to make sure that I could fit his body comfortably in a sense but I wasn't sure if I was making his body too big so I keep referencing the Hazo illustration but once we get into the actual coloring and the line art, I actually had a reference of Toma on my phone so that we can look at the style a little bit more closer because I wanted to try to match the style if I could. So yeah, back to the sketching. Um, definitely struggled with the proportions as well as kind of like a pose that would fit Masaki. So initially, I wanted to draw him with a bow. So I didn't explain this. I do you think he would be either Hydra or Dendro. I decided to ultimately make him Dendro and it kind of suits a little bit more better with the timing just because Sumeru is currently, you know, out and we do have some actual Dendro characters now. So just a little bit better reference and stuff as well as the vision and everything, even though we've seen Dendro visions before. But uh, yeah, the reason why I didn't do this earlier, despite 
many people asking me, especially like I think last year people were asking if I could draw my own characters or myself as a Genshin Impact character. And the reason why I didn't do it is actually because I struggle with design. So you're gonna see that quite a bit. I apologize to anyone who has a strong sense of like character design or just design in general, who probably has like a lot of gripes with the way I've designed Masaki's outfit. Uh, yeah, apologies about that. I, it's probably, it looks like a mess of things. Now, let me explain a few things. So in terms of his outfit, like I said, I wanted his sleeves to be tied. Um, I know for me, I like drawing Masaki in very like comfy, a little bit more looser fitting clothing. Like he's never really wearing like tight clothing. Not that much anyways. So I would imagine his sleeves will actually be really big and bellowy, but because he's a florist and he likes to work with his hands, I thought it'd be more appropriate to have his sleeves tied upwards. And they tie it in a specific way. I'm not too sure if this is specific to like kimonos or is it for yukatas, but I decided to do it, I think, what the reference I was using is for a yukata, how they tie it. So basically it's one um, kind of like strip of fabric or like a ribbon, I don't know how to explain it, like a band, and you basically loop it from one arm, cross in the back and loop it to the other arm and then tie it at the back. So that's what how I have it. Um, yeah, okay, now we're working on line art. I'm gonna be like bouncing back and forth. I do apologize if you guys are new to any of my videos. I tend to ramble a lot. So yeah, Masaki's line work and stuff, I kind of had to play around a little bit. So I was trying to find a brush that looks soft enough. So if you look at any of the Genshin Impact official art, especially like the splash art or any of those like character teaser kind of art that they usually post on either Twitter or Instagram, you can see that the line work and just the overall appearance is fairly, it has a mixture of like sharp and softness and I see that the lines look like it's done either in like marker or the kind of like a softer brush so I tried to not use such a harsh looking line arting tool like the G pen I decided to go with I'll leave the brushes in the description because I can't see it from here but I'll make sure to leave the soft paint brush and the line the line art brush that I've been using and then the boru pen which I use for sketching in the description so you guys can use those if you would like to um, yeah, I just thought this one had a bit of a softer look. You guys can't really see it probably until I get to the coloring stage, but it's a little bit lighter in opacity too. Like if you have a lighter touch, it doesn't go completely black, if that makes sense. So I thought that would kind of translate a little bit better when I'm coloring and it kind of caused me a little bit of an issue, but I'll get into that when we could do the coloring. So I was referencing Toma's uh, splash art for the most part just to check out how they do the coloring and then the softness of the lines and stuff as well as the eye style and all that so hopefully it matches a little bit closer to the Genshin style um but yeah so talking about the design so because he works with his hands I wanted the sleeves to be out of the way so have them tied up I've seen a lot of people who also wear more traditional wear who are more in like running shops or like a storefront kind of thing also wear these it's a much more comfortable also traditional but they also tie up their sleeves um probably to keep it out of the way so i did that for masaki now a choice that i'm still iffy about is that i have this chunk of fabric for masaki's uh around masaki's waist that kind of loops over the belt and kind of just drapes over so i wanted that to kind of mimic his apron um so Masaki's original design, um, he wears a brown apron over a kind of like teal turquoise turtleneck. So I wanted to kind of mimic that and have it cover. And in my initial design, I actually had it cover more of like the center and it's a little bit shorter. So it kind of looks more like a, like a cafe apron, if that makes sense, or like a, an apron that you would see in the kitchen where people kind of wear like only halfway. But then I kind of shifted it more towards the left side and I changed it to be teal instead of, or like kind of like the turquoisey, like turquoisey dark green color rather than brown. So I don't know if that's a good choice on my part. I think it would have made more sense to separate the fabrics and then to make it brown so it resembles the apron a little bit more. But for like color consistency, I did want him to be more overwhelmingly either dark green or teal rather than having almost an equal amount of brown and teal uh but yeah so on to coloring i did do the skin first and i didn't really notice this about genshin splash art but they have a like very minimal shading for the face 
Um, so I just followed how they have it for Toma, making the shadows on the nose a little bit more prominent. So it doesn't really have like a harsh line. It kind of has this, the shadow edge to indicate where the nose is placed. There's not really any blush or harsh shadows on the face itself. So after that, I did the eyes. I tried to use Toma as a reference because he had green eyes. And I think Masiki would be similar in like character type if that makes sense so i used toma as a reference very closely um and i tried to make sure that i got the texture of the hair more correct too it's very subtle and soft yet it feels very detailed i don't think i was able to capture it very well um because i had the urge to keep darkening certain areas and make it very contrasty but from when i was looking at tomas it isn't very much so it has like a little bit more like brush strokes to indicate like the hair strands and stuff and then has like a band of highlights so that's what i tried to do clothing i think it was the hardest i think i did an okay job on his kind of like this cream colored i don't know what color this is like this neutral off whitish beige color turned out quite okay but once i get into like the browns and some of the smaller areas i kind of revert back to how i usually work um which for me it doesn't really work but for you guys maybe there's not really too much of a difference hopefully um but yeah so for his eyes like i said i was looking at tomas because he also has green eyes so i was kind of trying to follow the same like similar color palette um if you look closely at the art it's also very like painterly i did mention that they have kind of a good mixture of kind of like sharp and soft lines but i think it's because they have such a painterly style you can get really those crisp clean lines but also have like this very painterly look where the edges aren't like super blended it's not airbrushed or anything like that so i tried my best to translate that and in back into masaki's art luckily i work in a little bit more of a painterly style but i don't think it turned out the way i wanted it to i i might want to look into getting a kind of like a harder straight brush maybe for painting and doing a little bit more testing with that uh, I think this is actually my favorite part. So I, when I was working on Masaki, I actually had a lot of fun doing the darker teal greenish fabric and then doing the patterns. So the patterns, I kind of changed up a little bit. I did want to have a bit more of like leaves and flowers or any kind of plant theme for him on this part of the fabric. Uh, just because I thought I was going to make it look more <laughs> kind of like an apron, but I decided to trail up the leaves and the petals or flowers up until the upper right a little bit so we can have the pattern make a little bit more sense i thought it just looked a little bit prettier um but yeah i just like how it looks um in terms of how i did the the folds a little bit of the shading there i just think it looks nice i usually struggle doing any kind of shading on top of patterning but i definitely think using a multiply layer helps with that and last thing i wanted to talk about was actually the line work um oh hopefully i mentioned this early i'll probably pop it in the beginning i decided to do like the little card or like little profiles of the character portion off screen so hopefully i'll put it at the beginning so you guys will see i also just referenced toma very closely so that we could do one for masaki because i think like i said i think there's a little bit of similarities there so i decided to do that and i won't be doing that on screen so the thing you're only gonna see for the rest of this video is just me coloring for his final splash art and i'm actually really proud of how the splash art turned out i think it looks fairly good um in terms of like the amount of patient i had working on this i think it worked out well because i spent i think an hour doing the sketching session and then this was about i think four hours and 30 minutes of doing this whole splash art or at least like how much i was able to record via screen recording which hopefully i didn't miss anything uh but yeah so i kind of colored a little bit differently so if you guys are familiar usually to how i work i work in a more simpler way or at least i think it's more simple i use my sketch as my line art basically and i just set my sketch to multiply change it to be a little bit warmer and i slap the colors all underneath making sure that you know i got my shadows and my lighting kind of established and then i'll merge everything and render and clean up and fix things on top uh, but for this it required me to do line work um, because i believe that's how they probably work on their characters it seems like very prominent that they have line work um, incorporated but there's some 
splash art that I've seen of Genshin characters that they definitely have more of a painterly element that's placed on top. Um, I'm not too sure which character is like that shows it the best but I believe it's one of the female characters. I think it's like more um, obvious in the hair or something. It might have been Jean if I think about it but yeah I'm not too sure. Uh, mm, yeah I reverted back to some old habits which I was trying to avoid um, whenever I color because every time I do shading on one side I would do highlight on the other and it gives almost this weird popping out round effect that I don't think fits with the Genshin style technically but something that I do a lot um, but I feel like it breaks that idea of making things look a little bit more like correct material or correctly weighted so that's something I kind of wish I preventing myself from doing mm, actually this part is actually when I decided to paint on top so I could see if I could fix any errors as well as change the line art a little bit so like it's a little bit more painterly and I was able to fix a few of the shapes um, as well so yeah, uh, Maseki is finished, so I'm going to be working on some background elements and trying to get the splash art to look like one of the, like basically the summoning screen. So I decided to use the lasso tool to make some wispy shapes so we could get some kind of like grass and leaves. And then I went in with the G-Pen to kind of clean things up. So some of the characters that I've seen, I think it's like Kokomi, uh, Saino has it, I think Raiden Shogun, Yaimiko, and Zhongli. All of them have kind of like background elements incorporated with um, kind of these effects. I think a lot of the other characters just kind of keep it more simple and they just have like effects going around, especially like a lot of the four stars. By the way, I made Masaki a four star. Hopefully that's not a problem. Um, I just think it fits him a little bit better. I don't know. Um, it was just, I don't know. I feel like I needed to do something more extravagant if I were to make him like a five star character. But my, my, okay, let's not say Masaki is the four star. Let's say my character designing is four star or below. Yeah, let's say that. So after I was able to do the elements, I tried my best to make sure that it looks a little bit more fancy. So I tried to blur and then kind of soften some like some of the elements that are swishing and swooshing around him. It kind of put it like a bit of a glow around the leaves as well. And now I'm trying to mimic the background. So we got a fairly dark muted blue as the background, kind of these warmer bands in the back that are quite faint and then has like these little... Um, speckles and dots everywhere and then last thing I wanted to do is to make it actually look like the summoning screen so I decided to put in the text oh I actually forgot about that I don't think I'll put in the final just know I'll probably fix it up for later but not for the video I forgot to put the dendro symbol next to his name so you can see that for uh Heizo, he has the animal symbol right next to his name I also will switch Masaki's name because I forgot to put uh, Matsumoto before Maseki, so it's correctly uh, placed in, in the right order. But here he is! Um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know it's very rambly and I apologize about that, but I actually really like this one. So here's Maseki in his full glory. Yeah, I'm gonna go now. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!